To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Hello friends, this is Manohar Veera from ExamPen. Welcome back to the General Awareness Series. In this session, we will be seeing about India's role in United Nations. If you have not watched our three-part video series on United Nations, the link is given in the description to get to know what is United Nations and how it operates. Please watch those videos and continue with the video. Okay, let's get started with India's role in United Nations. India is one of the founding members of the United Nations by 1945, which has happened two years before India's independence. India has actively participated in UN activities since then. India took a major role in drafting the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. India was the first chair of the Decolonization Committee. As a leader of non-aligned movement, where Jawaharlal Nehru was co-founder, India raised the issues of the Third World in the United Nations. India have bid for permanent membership in the United Nations Security Council and campaigns for the reformation of the UN system globally. India is one among the top troop contributors to the United Nations peacekeeping in terms of economy and military, India has shown a steady growth in the past decades, currently having one-sixth of the world population and being the world's largest democracy, India deserves a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. It is a complex situation. India is growing economically but lacks being when it comes to per capita indicators. Owing to its military strength, it is contributing its huge numbers to peacekeeping but cannot match the financing levels of P5 or Japan in relation to peacekeeping operations. A reform in the United Nations Security Council would necessitate the need for an amendment in the United Nations Charter, which is possible only when a resolution is adopted by two-third member nations in the United Nations General Assembly. It has to be further ratified by the constitutional process of two-third member nations including P5 nations. Effectively, even if India secures the support of two-thirds of UN members who are present and voting, it would still need the five permanent members to not to ease their veto and thereby prevent the adoption of the reform process. Brazil, Germany, India and Japan comprise the group of G4 nations, mutually supporting one another's bids for permanent seats. This sort of reform has traditionally been opposed by the Uniting for Consensus group, which is composed primarily of nations who are regional rivals and economic competitors of the G4 nations. The group is led by Italy and Spain, who are opposing Germany's permanent membership. Mexico, Colombia and Argentina, Argentina is opposing Brazil's membership, Pakistan who is opposing India's membership and South Korea opposing Japan's membership. Other than UK and France, three other permanent members of the Security Council are still against council reform that would entail a change in their present status. The possibility of the changes in the positions of the US and Russia are unlikely since they are in a state of relative decline. Since it is their current status in the Council that provides them pre-eminence on issues related to international peace and security, they are not expected to support any move that reduces their say in global politics. It is unrealistic to think that China would give up its present privileged status in the United Nations. Even as it seeks greater influence and presence in global politics as a rising power, the P5 are unlikely to approve the promotion of any country to permanent status due to the fact that such a change would eventually dilute their power. A careful reading of the report of the deliberations of the UNGA on November 7, 2016 would suggest that nothing has changed at the ground level, only the rhetoric of member countries has been amplified. Among other permanent members, China is India's biggest challenge in the Security Council. If we were to view our claim for permanent birth in United Nations Security Council from a critic's prism, we could say that in all earnestness, India's 
India itself has not abided by the UN resolution on Kashmir. Its human rights records are dismal and country is plagued with social levels like rampant corruption, crime against women and children, labor exploitation, internal and external security problems like terrorism and nationalism and communal disharmony. After more than 20 years of stalling, moves to reform the council to reflect a more global balance of power gained momentum in 2015 when a negotiating text was adopted by the General Assembly, overcoming strong opposition from a small group of countries including Pakistan and Italy. The adoption of the text was breakthrough as meaningful negotiations could not be held without such a document. Most UN members support increasing the total number of council members from 15 to the mid-20s and for making its working more transparent and involving non-member countries in its activities. So what can India do now? The current scenario shows that permanent seat in United Nations Security Council with veto power is a Himalayan task for India to achieve. We may get this done by one day. But we should also realize that there are many other alternatives like BRICS, G20, etc. in front of us. India have a great role to play in these groupings. India should come in front to work for peace when there are tensions like we did in the initial years of non-aligned movement. India couldn't react to the recent issues like Syrian crisis. India should give attention to its own security threats and this will help India to emerge as a global role model or a security provider. The oppositions and challenges which India faced in other groupings like nuclear suppliers group show that India still lacks a global consensus. United Nations Security Council is one of the toughest tasks for Indian diplomats. So with this we are concluding this session on India's role in United Nations and how India is pleading towards United Nations Security Council's permanent membership with veto power. Let us know on what topic we can make our next video in the comments below. We will add all of your topic suggestions to our roadmap list and will definitely make videos on those topics. If you have liked the video, please do share the video with your friends and I will see you in the next session. Goodbye. Thank you.